get back into position here. Oh, are we? We're doing another one. Okay. All right. Uh, get your burps out. Um, I'll be right back. <laughs> you got to poop? You? I, I got to blow my nose as well. Okay. What were you going to say? We're going to talk shit? Huh? Were you going to talk shit? No, it's in place. Go, go poop if you need to. Okay, you're gonna say something mean. <laughs> okay. I don't need to poop. <laughs> if you did. Hi, everybody. This is the introduction. I'm being very loud again. This is the introduction to the podcast, tentatively titled Stinky Boys Road Trip, working title. Title. We're always open to suggestions for what we should call the title. Um, please stop calling us fuckboys on the internet. It's not what we're going to call our podcast. Um, uh, you know, episode three, I, at first I was like, Stinky Boys Road Trip is a pretty good, but now I think we should really start... <laughs> I had about a real title. I had a whole list. We go sky captain the world tomorrow. I don't want to do that. I don't want to get sued. Uh, what was it like? Boily Sam and Boily Sam and, and the fascist crew. Boily Sam and the fascist crew. And then puppy kisses. Puppy kisses would probably get us a crowd that would be very disappointed when they heard the actual podcast. Uh, oh, we're still in the beginning here. All right, I'm Nathan. I'm Fright Shark at Fright Shark on Twitter, and with me is my best friend. Stinky boy. Stinky boy. He's the master of the road trip. Yep. He's at... I'm the... At Stinky Boy Podcast. No. We gotta get that Twitter account. Oh my god. <laughs> we gotta it. get it fast. Um, <laughs> actually, it's Jeff <laughs> at Jafeman. J-A-E-F-M-A-N. Um, You're getting really good at spelling these days. Thanks. Uh, I learned when I was five. <laughs> Most people learn when they're like four, but... I was a late bloomer. I, uh... Do most people learn how to spell at five? I don't know. My little sister learned how to spell cat when she was two years old. I think I knew how to write some things when I was, like, that young. I don't know, man. I didn't learn how to tie my shoe until I was, like, five, six, maybe. I wore Velcro until I was, like, five. I just made other people tie my shoes. I was living the baller life before I even realized it. I had people tying my shoes... Making my lunch. When I was in first grade, I was dressing myself, and that was a mistake. <laughs> I wore my... Did I ever tell you the story about how I wore my shorts backwards once? <laughs> no, grade? but I, okay. I probably did that too. Um, first time I ever dressed myself for school, first grade, uh, I put my shorts on backwards, and uh, I didn't realize it until we were having show and tell one day, and there was a girl sitting behind me, and she was laughing, and I was like, there's nothing funny happening right now. And then I was like, oh, I need to get a pencil. So I started feeling my pockets, and I was like, my front pockets feel a little weird and off-center. Um, but, you know, since I was a first grader, my thought was more accurately, my pockets feel wrong. <laughs> so I went to go use the bathroom. No. I stu- and then I felt my butt, and I felt the zipper on my butt, and, <laughs> and then I pulled my shirt all the way down, and I asked to use the bathroom, and I went to the bathroom, and I had to ch- turn my pants around, and that was probably the only time in school my pants have ever been off. You want to hear a really embarrassing story about when I was in first grade? I, uh, I already hate that I brought it up, because now I can't not tell the story. Oh, I should just go back and cut this whole chunk of audio out, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Okay. <laughs> God damn it, why'd I say anything? Alright, so... <laughs> so in Is this gonna stop you from being president? <sighs> no, it's gonna be wildly embarrassing, and it'll actually make me happier if no one listens to this podcast. Okay. When I was in first grade, we had this thing at our school. Um... I don't know if it was actually part of school, but we went to the school and then we left from there. It was like a swim week sort of thing where we like all learned about safety when you're swimming in a pool and shit like that. And first of all, that program was total bullshit because we didn't even get to get in the pool until the third day of the week. 
Like, they wouldn't let us just jump into a pool, which I'd been doing that for a while. I mm-hmm. was pretty good at swimming when I was six years old. So, okay, so the, when we finally were able to be going in, this was a whole school day. Um, so we literally would get to school in the morning, get on another bus, we'd go to uh, some pool, I don't remember where it was, but it was like an indoor pool. And then we would get back to the school, and our parents would have to come get us. And um, thank God that our parents had to come get us, and then I didn't have to ride the bus home. Because it was the fourth, maybe it was the final day, and uh, we had to pack a bag with, like, we would wear our swim suits and stuff to school, and then we'd change after we were done, and then before we got back on the bus. My mom oh, packed wow. my, my mom packed the bags uh, for all of the days, um, and she kept putting... She kept putting shirts in the bag that I didn't like. I didn't like changing into those shirts when I was done. So uh, Thursday night, uh, yeah, it was the last day. Thursday night, I decided I was going to pack my own bag for the fifth day, the final day. Uh, So in the morning, I put my swim trunks on, went to school, did the swim stuff, and then when we were changing back into our regular clothes, I realized I did not put a pair of shorts into the bag. Uh, and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and so I, uh, I sat in the locker room and I yelled for someone to call my parents so that they could bring me a pair of shorts because I didn't have a pair of shorts with me. I literally sat in my tidy whities in the locker room of this, this, uh, pool or yeah, the indoor pool and I refused to get up and leave. And, like, our teacher was a female, so she couldn't go into the locker room. So, like, they have kept having to get all the staff members to come in and try to get us, or try to get me out. And I would not leave until my dad left work, went to, like, a Kmart that was nearby, got a pair of shorts, and brought them to me. And then I was so embarrassed that I just made him drive me home, too. Because I, <laughs> I did not feel like being around those other kids. So that was one of the most embarrassing stories from when I was, uh... In elementary school and I hate that I thought about it and I hate that I told the whole story just now hey man that's a good story though I'm glad that you got it off your chest feels um, nice it's like I can breathe again uh, <laughs> that's been haunting me for like 20 years almost no, 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 18 years um, when we go to edit that you should put over that entire story like when it starts to ramp up and get scary you should totally edit in the scary song. Scary music, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I should have told it better with like a lot of suspense. I can uh, Dude, it felt suspenseful. <laughs> There's a lot of setup. Okay, so now that that's out of the way and I, I feel no shame anymore, that's all gone from my body, I have a question for you, Jeff, before we get into the main part of the podcast. And that is, well, we're already 10 minutes in almost. And that is, um, if someone... Someone came up to you, uh, someone who was incredibly rich, and they give you a million dollars for, you know, they just gave, they, they gave it to you before anything happened. They said, you can buy anything you want with this million dollars. The only thing is, whatever things you buy, one of those things, or if you buy just one thing, that thing is going to somehow be related to your death. So there's no telling how far in the future you would die from the things that you bought. And it doesn't matter what you bought. Eventually, that would somehow be the cause of your death. What Boy. would you buy? What are what are some things that you buy in the hopes that you could live a very long time? Oh, this is a really tough question. Yeah. Because... Uh, you can't buy any food. Right, because you choke on it and yeah. die immediately. That's See, that's the thing. You'd have to... And you would have... It would be in a separate account. Okay, thank goodness. And so you could keep going... You didn't have to use it, but you had that money there. If you really needed to use that money, you had a million dollars. But anything that you bought with using that account would eventually be related, tied into your death. And you can't transfer money out of it either. What if I invested that money? Well, that's the thing. You can just choose to never use it, but the money that you get back is still tied to that account. The money would come back into that account and you can't use it or it would kill you. Hmm. So, like, you know, you think, like, if you buy a car, 
you could die the day you took it off the lot, or you could die seven years later, like, because the car dies and blows up or something. It's a gamble. And so I, I think my mind always immediately goes to, like, oh, I'm going to buy something soft and harmless. But then it's, like, pillows. Someone could smother me with a pillow. Like, I buy a bunch of really nice pillows and beddings and stuff like that, and then someone just comes into my room at night. I lock my door, but they could still do it, probably. And just smother me to death with the pillow. What about a house? A house would, you know, could be a house fire, a tornado could Shit. knock it down, it could flood and kill you, uh, it could just collapse. God, this is like a... There's literally, there's no escape. There, I have, I don't know of any loopholes, other than just not using the money. I'm not thinking of any loopholes, I'm thinking about, like, what I could get with this. I don't want to spend any of this money, because... Anything I buy will kill me, or be re- just related to my death. Either, yep. Because even if um, you buy stuff for someone else, that person's going to eventually kill you. Don't doubt it. <laughs> I would buy someone a birth. I would be last minute. I wouldn't have my wall. I wouldn't have like my real card on me. And I'd exactly, have, I'd have the other card. And I'd be like, ah, oh, shit! I have to get this person like a birthday cake, and I get them the wrong birthday cake, and. That's the that's the one thing out of all the tiny things in my life that have like just nibbled at them that would just send them on a psychotic break and be like, this asshole got me a yellow coconut cake. <laughs> like, that is not even a real cake. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> it's like, that would be me. That's my luck. Um, but I don't think I would... S- I don't think... I would knowingly spend that money. There's one thing that I can think of that might not... That might be a loophole. It depends on what the subject is, though. You could use it to pay bills. If it wasn't a physical thing, like, I couldn't pay my car payment because then it would be tied to my car and my car could bill me. I I couldn't pay rent on a house or an apartment because then eventually that would kill me. But you could pay, like, your cable bill. Maybe. Maybe that would work. Couldn't pay your cell phone bill because the minute you put it to your face, it would explode and kill you, like in GTA V. Um, I would do uh, all the streaming services. <laughs> That's true. But I mean, then, can't kill you. then there's a weird middle ground where like, it goes to your computer. You could your, your computer could kill you in some way. But I'm going to say that's too many degrees of separation. I would pay my credit card bill. I would just use my credit cards all the time and then oh I'd pay my, my credit cards. Oh my god, yeah, that would work. I figured it out. There's two, okay, there's, because there can only be the one degree, and that's the thing you paid for. Unless someone sharpens my credit card and slits my throat with it, I don't think I could get killed for paying my credit card bills. Yeah, you'd have so bomb ass credit though. I would get like six credit cards, I would only ever use those, and then I just use my million dollar bank account to pay the credit card. Perfect. Got it. What would your credit limit be after like a month? Um, well, after the well, as I say, credit period. I wouldn't even care because you assume you get like a thousand dollar. I I have a I have a three thousand dollar limit on my credit card, so I assume I could probably get a fifteen hundred dollar limit on any other one if I like got a new one. Yeah. So I should get like six fifteen hundred dollar credit cards. I'm set. I don't need to worry about anything. I, I just can't buy anything that's more expensive than fifteen hundred dollars. What would you buy that's more... You'd buy, like, a 4K TV, but mm, why would you need that? I don't know. But I'd also have a million dollars, so I wouldn't need to worry about need. I'd just buy things that I wanted. That's true. So, yeah. All right, I figured it out. Well, that that's... I think that's the first uh, hypothetical or, uh, that we've solved. We've come up with the perfect solution. So, it's... Either, yeah, you pay for online services. You You pay for like cable or internet, and you pay for your credit card bills. There it is. Um, all right, I'm going to look up the thing that I said to you. look up your, your questions question. for me? Yeah. All right. It was yesterday. Scrolling past all the emojis that we saw all each our, other. Our emojis that we love, poop gun, uh, wife football. Uh, this, is, this is essentially dead yes, air. Yes, here we go. All right. Um, you have your own island. What would you do with it? And this is coming with like the assumption that you have enough money to pay for this island because islands are usually like mid-range, like 
thirty thousand to like a hundred thousand dollars. They're not exp like for being islands that you could buy, you'd expect them to be a lot more expensive. Right. But let's say like money isn't a problem. Like, what would you do with this island? Okay, so we're saying I'm a rich man who bought an island. Yeah, basically, like you won the lottery, and one of the first things you did was buy an island. Like that was your first big purchase. Okay, if money's not an issue. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn the island into one of two things. The whole island? The whole island. Well, well, there is, you won't need the whole island, but the majority will be. I'll make a big ass racetrack, and we'll all race really expensive cars around the island. Or I'll take like a jungle on the island, and we'll use it as an airsoft arena. There's also no animals on the island, except for birds. Could I bring animals to the island? Yeah. Could I bring 100,000 dogs and put them all on the island and let them live there? Yes. Then but they would end up eating each other. Well, I'd give them food sources. Oh, okay. They would create packs and fight, probably. Uh, so that's my answer. Dog Island. That's a good one. That. I, was, I, I really like the airsoft thing, though. Yeah, I'd love to take a jungle and just, like, kind of clean it up. Like, like not make it so brushy, and just have flat ground. It's like and pathways. Just, yeah, and they just have, like, paintball and airsoft fights in it. Money's not an option, though. I make, issue. I'm, I mean, uh, issue. Yeah, I make robots that don't fight, but they run around the woods like you're hunting them, and then you have real guns, <laughs> and, oh. and you kill robots. I think I would do that with lasers, like laser tag, because I wouldn't want... To accidentally shoot one of my friends because if we have if we have real guns, that could be a thing. Well, we'll also, it's going to be on like squad. international waters, so you'll get away with murder. Yeah, but then you'll feel so guilty afterwards. Nope. I'll I I'll uh, if I don't have, if I if money's not an issue, then that means that I, I can, would I can kidnap Chad Kroger, <laughs> uh, and I can I can hunt the most dangerous game on my island. <laughs> I'll put him in an Which orange is Chad Kroger. I'll <laughs> he is the most dangerous game. I'll put him in an orange jumpsuit. I'll drop him into the woods like like that movie The Condemned starring Stone Cold Steve Austin. I would get Stone Cold Steve Austin to help me hunt Chad Kroger. And then I'd get him to read me a book, probably like a bedtime story. Uh or you know, we just sit in the living room of my house and just read and watch TV. Me and Steve Austin. It's Uncle Steve Austin. I thought you said Uncle Steve Austin. Would you? I call him. Un- I call him Uncle Steve Austin. Uncle Steve. Uncle Steve Austin. Uncle Stone Cold Steve Austin. Can you read me a bedtime story? <laughs> sure, Nathan. Can you? I oh, I would get him to put a real life Stone Cold stunner on Chad Kroger. Uh, one where they don't make them do the flop. One uh-huh. where he actually brings his neck down on his shoulder, and probably snap his neck right there. God. That's what that's what we would do. We'd shoot him in the we'd shoot Chad in the leg. What would, so he couldn't what did run Chad anymore. Kroger do to you? I just don't like him. All right, he he needs to figure it out. And <laughs> so yeah, I'd shoot him in the leg so he falls down. He can't run away. Then I pick him up, make him stand on one leg, and then I get Stone Cold Steve Austin to put an actual stunner on him and break his neck. Here's some other people. Isn't there like a celebrity that I really hate? Like, there's quite a few with uh, with a passion. I can't think of uh, probably Pitbull. I'd probably hunt Pitbull with Pitbulls. So I would make dogs uh, hunt him down. Uh, who's that? Who's that one rapper? Um, he listens to his own music during uh, it, Riff Raff. <laughs> yes. I don't know if I'd kill Riff Raff. I, I would try to make him sad. I'd try to make him really sad. But so, I don't know. I don't know how you make a man like that sad. I wouldn't want to hurt his dogs. He has dogs? He does have dogs. They're cool. Damn. And I love his vines, though, so I don't know. Maybe I'd leave him alone. I'd just destroy any studio he was going to record music in. Yeah, I'd pay him off to not uh, type the way that he types. I'd... S- <laughs> yeah. Stop with the fucking I. Yeah, all caps except the letter I. You know how much effort it takes to, to make... To have caps lock on and have to uncapitalize every single I you type? That's the wrong kind of dedication. Like, that's like OCD dedication. This is like weird OCD. It's like inverse. Um, I think 
if I had my own island, I would deforest like a quarter of it. Um, maybe not all, maybe not everywhere, mm-hmm. but I'd build like little towns of like little houses and stuff, with interconnecting roads. So you want a you want a real life Daisy Island? Is that just, is that what you want? Kind of, but I also want to live on the island, and I want other people to live on the island with me. But I also want to install like an alarm system or something. It's like okay, it's island wide airsoft gun time or something like that. Also, I would or or this is also my second runner up. Actually, this might be my primary idea where I just get a tiny shack, put it in the middle of an island. Um, everyone knows that I own this island. Like it is public knowledge that I own this island. And everyone would think that I would just put this shack. Like, that's what I fucking wasted my money on. Just a shack. Yeah. But you go in the shack, and uh, you open my fridge door, and there's a ladder that goes down into my underground base. <laughs> okay. Um, and the only way to get to the island is by boat. And the way you get in is, it's going to be like the 19... 19- 80s Transformer show with the Decepticon base. The thing just rises out of the water. Right. You just drive into that. Okay. I like that. So that's another thing. I would make an underground racetrack, and I think I've told you about this before, but what I would do is I'd have an underground racetrack where my friends and I would go and race like Lamborghinis. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, I wouldn't make an entrance big enough for someone to fit a Lamborghini in, so they would have to bring all the parts in and hand-build these Lamborghinis for me. And they can't bring machines in either, so they have to do it by hand. They have to put together Lamborghinis with old-style tools so that me and my friends could race them around a track. And if if one breaks, we're going to have to call the technician to fly out to our island and bring some parts because I need to fix uh, my Lamborghini. I crashed my Lamborghini into a wall. I'm going to need you to repair it for me. They get a lot of money. I'd pay them very handsomely. They're like, hey, we'll promote we'll promote your uh, auto body shop on YouTube. I would essentially just be paying the price for another Lamborghini at that point. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be that would, would be, be great. Built. Yeah, it would have it would have the craftsmanship of uh, like woodworking, but a Lamborghini style. I would pay someone to build me a Lamborghini at a what, Legos. Like Would it that, work? Like the Lego. Have you seen the Lego car? Someone built a working car out of Legos. Ah, god damn it! Like I don't know how it's powered though. I think it's, it's I think it's powered by itself. That doesn't. Is it like a Flintstones car? Do you, I like, think it's like it's got. I think you have to pedal a little bit. I don't remember how it works. It might be a little. I think it's powered by like one battery. I don't remember what it is. It's stupid and it doesn't drive that fast. Like honestly, I think it gets like ten miles an hour. But it's a car made entirely out of Legos, so... I fucking hate this world. I mean, good for that guy who dedicated that much time and, like, engineering prowess for that. Yeah, good on you, but, I mean, you could also engineer some things that... I, you you can engineer cars that uh, have better gas mileage instead of a Lego car. I think... didn't people Don't people do that all the time and then they get, like, shut down by, like, big oil? <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, you could partner with a car company because car companies actually care about that stuff and they actually do things about it. But, I mean, yeah, just keep building your Lego cars and your uh, your life-size Batmobiles and shit. That's fine. I think it's weird that there's, like, such a... There's a huge difference in uh, opinion regarding, like, what to go for when it comes to, like, cars and oil like cars want to be more efficient and stuff like that and then you know big oil companies they want to destroy the earth so that they (laughs) sell more oil it's a tough spot because i drive a car that's pretty good on gas the next car i'm gonna get i plan on being better on gas probably a hybrid or an electric but in the back of my head i want a mustang gt which is not good on gas I, i want a cobra which is not good on gas and I want a Ford F650, which is essentially a dump truck. <laughs> and I want to drive that around like it's a regular truck. So, I don't know. I'm in a weird spot where I want both. I want a big-ass truck, but I also want all these really efficient cars to make up for the big-ass truck. F650 has three rows of seating. That's 
one. It's room. a pickup truck with three rows of seating. There's no, there's no need. But I love the, uh, I love the concept of it. I tried to get my old roommate to buy one, but he never did. Instead, he bought a backhoe that doesn't work. Backhoe that doesn't work. I think he just bought a tractor. He he bought a tractor. He bought a five thousand dollar gun vault. That's airtight. And fireproof up to like three thousand degrees, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so not that it matters because it's on the bottom. It's on the you know his garage. Yeah. And it's on the bottom floor, so it's already on the ground. So. I mean, and it's a weird spot to have a safe because he have to run downstairs and get his guns out of the safe if he needed to protect himself. And I, that's already too we late. watched we watched how long it took him to open that thing. He's not good with numbers, and it's a dial lock combination thing. So he'd have to do that. It's like a four digit thing. There's no reason. It's excessive. He also has a hydraulic car lift in his garage, um, and too many cars that don't work. He's the problem. I can't buy an F six fifty as long as he's still buying cars. <laughs> And, like, just letting them go to waste. He's been trying to fix his Trans Am for... How long has it been? Has it been, like... It's been about six years. The better part of a decade. Uh, I think he got it in 2008. He fixed it. It broke, and he fixed it again, and it broke. And I don't know what he's doing with it now. He should buy a new dishwasher, though. <sighs> so many things he needs to buy. But he doesn't like... He He sometimes doesn't like to spend money on important things... But then he'll buy a tractor <laughs> or a backhoe that he breaks, like, a month later. Is he st- isn't he still trying to fix the backhoe? The backhoe's not even, like, it's not functional. No, the engine's blown out. I don't even remember what happened to it, but... He has to get, like, a specific part. Yeah. He spent, like, nine months paying that guy for that backhoe. And then he bought, like, a motorcycle from him, too. That I don't even... I don't even know where that motorcycle went. But... He's really good with his money. He makes far too much for um, for what he deserves, I think. Uh, he's just got good connections, man. That's what I need. I need those sweet, sweet networking opportunities. Yeah. Uh, for everyone out there, Fright Shark is actually a really good computers guy. Um, That's my official title. Yeah, really, computers really guy. good computers guy. It's on his resume. Yeah, um, it's actually in place of my name on the top of the resume. It's really good computers guy, and then instead of my address and phone number, it just says hire me for your job. I'll do it. Yep. And then it's my email address, my his, real email address. His website is frightshark is a good computers guy dot com. There's a dash between every word. Slash, ask me about employment. That's all slash one. resume slash dot html. <laughs> yes, it's it's not the actual symbol slash the word slash dot html. Yep. So potential employers, go to that, rewind the uh, episode, listen to the URL, check out my resume. Um, you're gonna you're gonna want me in your company. I can promise you that. Yep. If you're gonna you, want him inside of your company. If you want a guy, let me let me let me do my pitch here. If you want a guy who's going to do an average to above average job and then spend the rest of his time on Twitter, look no further. I got you right here. It's me, baby. I will do that. I can be that guy. And I will not back down until I get too frustrated. And then I'll be in the bathroom on Twitter on my phone. That's what I do. So just a little resume. uh, Consider that my cover letter. Looking for a job where I can fuck off 60% of the time. Still make at least the amount of money I'm making now. That would be ideal. Thank you in advance. Realistically, though. Oh, realistically. He's good. Realistically, uh, I don't want to work. Pay me me to do this. Yes. If anyone out there listening just wants to... uh, I don't know, just chuck me like a a 50 for every one of these that I put up. Um, I'll gladly accept it. It will go towards me eating dinner and me paying for my cell phone to check Twitter when I'm at work. Which would be this job. This would be the job. Yes. Uh, the quality of podcasts will go down significantly because I'll actually have my phone out the whole time and I'll tweet every joke that I make. And so not, not only will the podcast be ruined, but all the comedic value will be lost 
because you will have already read the tweets. And as the second half of this podcast, I will be, you know, forced to try to pick up some of the slack when the quality goes down. But it will be too much pressure. We're going to have to talk about you being on the podcast moving forward if people start sending me money. Because then they'd have to send two fifties. They'd have to support both of us, and uh, I don't know if that would be financially viable. So well, we'll talk. About, we'll talk about it later. Keep going. We'll, Wait. <laughs> keep going. Uh, uh, so I wasn't. This was under the assumption that I wasn't going to be paid. I was just going to do a pro bono, and then it would just be too much pressure for me. Um, we'll have to talk about that. I want. <laughs> I want money. <laughs> well. Uh, I would like a rich sweetheart. To give me money. The sweetheart can be a man or a woman. I do not. I'm going to have to talk to the higher-ups about whether or not you'd stay on if we started getting paid. Um, You're the... Uh, that's you. And There's no higher we, I have to a- schedule a meeting. They're very busy. Um, and on that note... Nathan doesn't know how to tie his shoes. Didn't I say at the beginning that I learned when I was five? Yeah, but you forgot last year. And on that note... I'm Fred Shark. And I'm Jeff. Jafe Man. Jeff Jafe Man. At Jeff Jafe Man on Twitter. At, at Jeff dash Jafe Man. Underscore Jafe Man on Hasht- Twitter. Hashtag Jafe Man. That's in his username. No, tweet with hashtag Jafe Man. Um, and uh, uh, tweet, tweet at Jeff with hashtag Jafe Man and tell him how many girls you've kissed in your life. Or boys, if you kiss boys. Probably more than me. Probably more than both of us combined. Um, but I can tell you... Two. <laughs> I can tell you, if you're try- if you're going to try to tweet at Jeff and outdo us for the number of dicks you've seen, I can assure you, I got that one beat. So, um, I think I beat that number yesterday on accident. Uh, I, looked, I saw a lot of dicks yesterday. Where were you? Was this at the gym? <laughs> no. No, I've only seen one dick at the gym, and that's one one too many. Uh, oh, is that the sad old guy? The sad old guy that walks around, and he doesn't even care. He he knows it's happening, but he feels like he doesn't owe anyone anything. He doesn't owe anyone the the uh, the humility of covering his dick in the gym. <laughs> so, I mean, good on him, but that's the last thing that I, like, I don't know. I was in a different state of mind. I didn't. I wasn't expecting to be seeing a dick within the like two-hour period. I was at the gym. I was just going to wash my hands, and then there was a dick, sad dick, sad, a sad dick on a sad man. All right. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the end of the podcast. Tune in next time. We're going to talk about frogs. We're going to talk about all the dicks I've seen. Frogs. All right. Bye.